Hello and welcome to this session on object oriented programming. Today we will learn what exactly is object oriented programming. We will see how did object oriented programming emerge and how did non structured programming led to structured programming and then how did structured programming led to object oriented programming. We will also understand object oriented programming with some real life examples. So this is going to be very easy and interesting. Let us begin. If we have to define object oriented programming, a bookish definition will look something like this. It is a programming technique where the code is based on functions and attributes of the objects. Now this is a little difficult to understand. So let us break it down and let us take a step back and understand how exactly this did object oriented programming came into existence. To start with we had non structured programming and here the developers would create a very linear code. That means there were no modules in the program. There were simple programs which had all the actions coded inside a single program and there were languages like basic and COBOL which were based on this kind of programming methodology. Now this kind of programming made it very difficult to maintain and enhance the code. In fact the developers who created the code found it very difficult to read their own code because it has grown so large and so complex and there were no modules. The issues with this kind of programming led to structured programming and here the code was organized into structures or modules and the modules could talk to each other. Languages like C and Pascal were based on this kind of programming methodology. This was very successful and coding was very easy and convenient but still it was felt that for large enterprise level applications we need something more. The programming should be able to relate to the real life entities and due to this a new kind of programming methodology was born which was known as object oriented programming and languages like Java and C++ are based on this kind of programming methodology. Let us go a little more deeper and let us take an example. A bank account holder withdraws money from an ATM. What are the steps? So the person will go to the ATM, he will insert his card, he will enter his passcode, enter the amount to be withdrawn and then withdraw the cash and take out the card. Now if we have to write a code for this in non-structured programming methodology, it will look like something like this. There will be a single program and all the steps will be coded inside it. Here is an example. You can see the entire logic is written inside a program. There are lines which are numbered and there are some conditional go to statements which can make the control jump to some part of the programs but still it is all inside a single program. So this is how this will look like into non structured programming. Now this is very linear and there are no modules and therefore it is very difficult to maintain and enhance the code. Basic, COBOL and Fortran are the languages which use this kind of programming methodology. So now let us go and see how will this example look like in structured programming. As we already discussed structured programming will have structures or modules for separate actions. So for example this is an example for withdrawing money. So we will have a module called withdraw money and all the code for this particular action will be housed inside this particular module. And then similarly we can have other modules like deposit money, open account and so on. And these modules can talk to each other. We can understand this in this way. There are different modules for every action and these modules can talk to each other and work in a coordinated manner with the help of some functions and arguments and passing values to each other. Now you can imagine it becomes very easy for a developer to create the code to enhance the code and, the, and to update the code. 
if there is any change in the module for deposit money he will only have to change that particular module and should not worry about open account or withdraw money or close account modules also if there is a new action or a new scenario added we can create a separate module and this separate module can again talk to the existing modules using the functions and arguments so this is how structured programming made it very easy another thing that you should understand is structured programming works on actions let's take this example a person opens account with a bank and deposits money and uses his credit card to withdraw money from the ATM in this scenario what are the actions or what are the verbs open account is an action deposit money is an action and withdraw money is another action so normally in structured programming a developer will create modules based on these actions they will be a module for open account a module for deposit money and a module for withdraw money so you can see this is how structured programming will look like with the help of this example so the program is programming is very modular there are separate modules or structures the maintenance and enhancement and change is very easier now languages like C and Pascal use this kind of programming now although structured programming is very useful and makes the life of a developer very easy and convenient and it was used for a really long time but it was felt that structured programming is very good for mid-size level applications but when we talk about large enterprise level applications the developers were not able to relate the code in their programming to real life scenarios or real life entities and that is where object oriented programming was born now if we have to uh, create a program for this particular example in object oriented programming what we have to do now the answer is object oriented programming does not work in this way we cannot just have actions and create a code for this in fact object oriented programming works with classes and objects let us go deeper and let us understand what does this mean what is a class you can understand class as a template or a blueprint for creating anything for example if you want to create a building or you want to create a house you will have a design document or a blueprint of that uh, creation of that house and using that template or blueprint you can create the house and you can create n number of houses or n number of buildings using a single template so this is the same in object oriented programming class is a design document or a template and using this template we can create multiple objects in object oriented programming you will find that it depicts real life entities in the form of objects and these objects are created using classes let us understand it more deeply here is an example an account holder withdraws money from his bank account using credit card now in structured programming we had worked on actions here we will work on entities or you can say what are the nouns in this particular scenario an account holder is a noun or an entity bank account and credit card in object oriented programming we will create classes for these entities so we will have a class for account holder we will have a class for bank account and we will have a class for credit card now imagine an account holder in real life for example Tom is an account holder even Henry is an account holder and so is Sarah now any account holder will have some attributes what are the different attributes an account holder can have he can have a name age date of birth address and so on and there are some actions or some functions that an account holder can do so for example 
Tom can deposit money in his account, he can also withdraw money and transfer funds. And the same goes for Henry and Sarah. Now in object oriented programming, we will create a class which will have the same attributes and the same functions or actions. So a class in object oriented programming will look something like this. The account holder class will have all these fields, name, age, date of birth and address and all these actions in the form of functions, deposit money, withdraw money and so on. So you can relate the account holder class to a real account holder in real life. As already discussed, class is a template to define objects and using this class or this template we can create multiple objects. So using this account holder class, we can create multiple objects. We can create an account holder object for Tom, for Henry and so for Sarah. I hope you can understand it better now. Using the account holder class, we can create multiple account holders. Similarly, using the bank account class, we can create multiple bank accounts. And then for credit card, we can create multiple credit cards. And these classes will have functions which can talk to each other. I hope now you can go back to the bookish definition and now we can understand what exactly this means. The programming is based on functions and attributes of the objects. I hope now the object oriented concepts are very clear. I will meet you in the next session. Thanks for watching.